Should you be chasing down high ketone levels in order to optimize weight loss? Is there a blood ketone level sweet spot which will maximize your fat burning? If so, what is it? Let's find out. Hey Carb Dodgers, my name is Dr. Dan Mags. Thanks for visiting my channel where I help people achieve long-term sustainable weight loss through low carb, real food nutrition. I struggled with my weight pretty much my entire life back until 2016 when I went from being officially obese to being a normal weight in just six months and I've maintained it ever since. I'd love to be your guide and show you how to do the same. I release new videos here every Tuesday so I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel or hit that bell to get notified whenever I release a new video. So when people discover the power of ketosis for weight loss, and it is awesome, it can be pretty normal to think if some ketones are good, then more ketones must be better. And so there's this idea that you can find an optimal ketone level that will help you lose weight at an optimal rate. But is this true? And if so, what is that level? So many so-called keto experts would have you believe that you should be aiming for high blood ketone levels um, simply because that means that you're burning more fat and that will speed up somehow weight loss or optimize your weight loss. And you may well have been advised, cut back on the protein, increase the amount of fat you're supplementing with in order to get higher ketone levels. As we'll see in this video, that advice will get you higher ketone levels, but is it really something you should be aiming for? I'm gonna argue that it doesn't actually make any sense. And in fact, it may actually be detrimental. Now, I've always been keen to experiment on myself, and this graph shows my lean muscle mass when I tried to stay in a high level of ketosis for a six week period. I lost about five pounds of lean muscle in six weeks. Not ideal, definitely something you don't wanna do. Now there's definitely different groups of people who may benefit from running pretty high levels of ketones, such as therapeutic diets for epilepsy, certain cancers, certain neurological disorders. You'll also find that certain athletes prepare, prefer to run higher levels of ketones relating to their needs for their sport. And there's also some cognitive benefits to higher levels of ketones. But there is also one group of people who definitely shouldn't be chasing high ketone levels, and that's type one diabetics. Now, I don't wanna go into why this is here on this video, because it will take too long. But if you wanna find out more about that, then check the blog post that accompanies this video. You'll find the link in the description below this post. But we're focusing on today that most people get interested in ketosis, fat loss. Many of the websites and YouTube channels promoting ketogenic diets will tell you the following. 0.1 to 0.5 means you're not in ketosis. 0.5 to 1.5 is a, a light ketosis. 1.5 to 3 is kind of the optimum sweet spot for, for ketosis. And anything above 3 doesn't really add anything. Now, we're talking about blood ketone figures here. Now, because by far the most accurate way to measure ketone levels is using blood ketone readings. Urine ketone sticks don't really give us that much information about how high the level of ketosis is, and they tend to be less accurate after several weeks of being in ketosis. So it's blood ketone levels that we'll be talking about in this video. Now, it's all very well giving me a set of rules to live by, and you can take those numbers I gave you earlier for what you will. But personally, I'm never really gonna fully embrace a set of rules until I understand the why behind them. So I did some thinking, uh, I saw those numbers and I thought, we need to dive deeper and really try and understand, you know, what, what do they mean? So I'm gonna take you through this step by step and you might be surprised by the outcome. In order to get started, we need to understand what do ketone levels really tell us? What do they mean? Well, to answer these questions, we need to go back a step and understand the following things. What factors affect our blood ketone levels? The levels of ketones, and anything for that matter, is really dependent on two different things. The rate at which ketones are being produced versus the rate at which ketones are being used up. What affects the rate at which ketones are being produced? Well, ketones are being produced by the body all the time, just at really low levels. 
If you test the blood ketone levels of someone who is a carb burner, you're gonna get a reading of 0.1. Ketones are produced by the liver and in order to produce them in any great amounts, we need to not be burning dietary or stored carbohydrates for fuel. In fact, we need to have low insulin levels and raised glucagon levels. Now we've talked about insulin a lot on this channel. Insulin is the main fat storage hormone, but glucagon is like the opposite. It encourages fat breakdown. So we can achieve these states by a very low carbohydrate diet or intermittent fasting or probably both. And under these conditions, the liver will produce ketones from our body's stored fat. But ketones can also be made from dietary fat. Many of you all know that medium chain triglycerides such as from coconut oil can't be stored by the body and are therefore turned directly into ketones by the liver. It's one of the reasons that coconut oil has become so popular. But increased dietary fat in general will lead to higher levels of ketone being produced by the liver. And you'll find many people across the internet telling you to increase your fat intake in order to increase your ketone levels. And yes, it works. But is it the right thing to do? Whilst ketosis is great because it tells us that we're burning fat, it doesn't tell us where that fat is coming from. Is it your body fat or from fat that you've eaten? The level of ketosis can't tell you the difference between the two. Let's now look at things that cause a lower production of ketones. So obviously, too many carbohydrates. It goes without saying, but consuming too many carbs will mean your body will largely shut off ketosis. Secondly, the dawn effect. You will naturally produce less ketones in the early morning due to the dawn effect. Now, the dawn effect occurs due to a surge of hormones such as cortisol, which will produce more blood glucose from protein in the early hours of the morning. It does so in order to prepare your body for the day. There's not a lot you can do about this, but it is a good reason not to check your ketone levels first thing in the morning. And thirdly, protein intake is often said that consuming a lot of protein may also cause lower levels of blood ketones as our bodies create glucose from the protein that we consume. In fact, we now know that protein consumption actually has very minimal effects on levels of blood glucose due to the different way that protein is being used while the body is in a state of ketosis. But the level of ketones in the blood isn't just dependent on the rate that they're being produced by the liver. We also have to think about how fast they are being used up by the body. So what affects the rate that ketones are being used up? Well, ketones are an energy source for tissues of the body. So if the body is using them in increased amounts, then you'd expect lower levels. So what would cause this? Well, firstly, and most obviously, exercise. We see lower levels of ketones in the blood after exercise. Test it for yourself. Just check ketones before and after an intense workout. Secondly, keto adaptation. If your body has been burning carbohydrates for fuel all its life, your cells won't burn ketones as efficiently as they will after a few weeks in, or months in ketosis. There are changes at the cellular level which will mean increased burning of ketones when you become adapted. So now we can answer the question, what do high levels of ketones actually tell us? We now know the things that increase and decrease our blood ketone levels. And so we can work out that you can raise your blood ketone levels by one consuming more fat. Now your body isn't just gonna let your ketone levels rise and rise, that would be dangerous. So what is it going to do? Well, it's going to start to down-regulate the amount of fat that is being released from your own fat stores. Now if you're trying to lose body fat, then down-regulating the use of your own body fat for the sake of increasing ketone levels isn't exactly ideal. Number two, do less exercise. Doing less exercise for the sake of keeping your ketone levels high is perhaps more obviously counterintuitive. But I have seen people on the internet telling people to reduce their exercise specifically to keep their blood ketone levels raised. Seems crazy, right? So I say do that exercise. Burn those ketones. Build those muscles. 
make your muscles more insulin sensitive and your body will have to upregulate the quantity of ketones it is producing and will in fact increase body fat breakdown in order to compensate. And number three, cutting protein intake. This is perhaps the most concerning piece of advice that I hear. You need how much protein you need. You can't just reduce protein below this level without causing some harm. Now, protein is important for several reasons. Number one, most notably, muscle repair and tissue growth. Secondly, protein is also really a very filling nutrient. And thirdly, most sources of proteins are also important sources of micronutrients. That's the vitamins and minerals that make up the rest of everything when we take macronutrients out of the picture. The amount of protein that you need will be based on several things, including your activity levels and the type of activity that you do. So for example, if you lift lots of heavy weights, you'll do more muscle damage, therefore you'll need more for repair and growth. The last thing we want to do is consume too little protein in order to chase high ketone levels. If we do, we run the risk of not having sufficient protein intake to maintain our lean muscle mass. It's fat you want to lose, not muscle. So are more ketones really better? Now, I agree that under 0.5, you're probably not really burning many ketones at all. You might still be losing weight but perhaps not as much as you could be. But really above 0.5, you're definitely in a light ketosis and really anything greater than one is fantastic. It should be easy to achieve these levels by eating a well-formulated low-carb diet, such as what I'm gonna describe for you shortly. I wouldn't go increasing your fat intake and decreasing exercise or reducing protein intake in order to purely get to higher levels of ketones for the sake of it. And if it's still less than one and you're still losing weight, well, you're still losing weight. Great stuff. Unfortunately, I think the word keto has come to mean consuming fat for the sake of consuming fat in many circles, often at the expense of getting adequate protein and vitamins and minerals from good quality, unprocessed sources of food. Carbs should be at a level which doesn't turn off your fat burning and turn you into a carb burner locking away those fat stores so they can't be used. And that level is different for all of us. Protein should be at a level which your body needs, even if this costs you a few points on your ketone readings. If you're like me and you do quite a lot of resistance training, you wanna really prioritize getting your protein in above anything else. Fat, fat should be used to satisfy your hunger and not just added to boost ketone levels for the sake of it. If the amount of fat you need to keep full results in levels of ketones or two or three, then that is fine. But don't chase the higher figures just for the sake of it. Much better to focus on real food sources, which will give you loads of great vitamins and minerals along with it. That's why I tend not to recommend things like Bulletproof Coffee. The exception to this is in the first few weeks or months of switching to a ketogenic diet, when adding in fat can help your body get used to using fat as the primary source of fuel. Things like bulletproof coffee or fat bombs can be really useful at this stage, but they're usually pretty lacking in other vitamins and minerals. So I don't find this to be a useful long-term strategy. Before we finish, I wanna share with you something that illustrates the problem that I'm talking about. I found this comment on another YouTube channel while I was researching this video, which I think really illustrates the problem. And so this guy in the comments says, I was just having this problem. I've been on keto for three and a half weeks and I'm down 17 pounds, but my ketone levels dropped over the last five days. I've gone from pretty steady one to 1.8 all the way down to 0.5. I'm gonna try upping the fats and see what happens. Now this person is clearly getting great results on their ketogenic diet, but they're focusing on their ketone levels instead of keeping doing what they're doing, which is helping them to lose weight. Because they're chasing ketones, they've identified reduced ketones as the problem, despite that the fact that they're losing weight. And they're trying to fix the problem with the ketones, which isn't a problem. Just for clarification, I'm not saying that these higher ketone levels are bad per se, and you shouldn't be worried if these are the readings you're getting. I'm just saying that if you're getting readings of one, or even less if you're achieving your goals, 
then don't stress out about aiming for levels of two or three just for the sake of it, especially if it means cutting down on your protein and consuming extra fat. So in summary, be in ketosis, but don't chase those higher figures. Try and remember what you're trying to achieve. If you're trying to lose weight, then the main thing you should be tracking is your weight. If you're trying to lose size, then the most important thing to be tracking is your physical measurements. And if you're trying to improve your type two diabetes, then you'll wanna be checking your blood glucose levels and your HbA1c levels. Chase the results you're after, not the ketone levels. They can easily mislead you. By all means, use them for a bit of troubleshooting if you're finding you hit a plateau or you're not achieving your goals. But they're most useful for checking whether you're not in ketosis at all, in my opinion. But if you're achieving your goals, don't stress about it. I didn't check my ketone levels once during my weight loss journey, and I still managed to consistently lose weight for six months. I don't check them on a regular basis now either. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please give it a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. I'm here every Tuesday with new videos, so make sure you hit the subscribe button down below this video. I'll see you next week.